So in this presentation, I want to talk about uh, the choices that you have primarily with uh, Azure. Um, I think some of this you can really think about too in terms of other technologies. Um, but really the overarching thing here is kind of like trying to figure out what kind of data you have and then picking the right uh, data platform to meet those needs. Um, so there's a few things that I like to think about whenever I'm like designing a system and trying to figure out what kind of um, data I have, um, how I'm going to consume it and what the needs of the data are. So there's a, a great um, diagram that I always think of in terms of, you know, usage patterns. Um, so on the left you have like a SQL Server or MySQL or something that runs SQL. So this is typically a fairly complex system um, and you know it might be scalable but it usually comes at a cost. Um, so really this takes more performance to scale it out um, versus a NoSQL approach. Typically very simple services um, but they're generally way more scalable and really what I mean here is that uh, like hugely reduced cost over implementing the same scale uh, with a no, no SQL approach versus a SQL approach. So that's how I like to think of this. Um, so this is like, I mean you get more benefits on the left, um, but it costs you, right? So um, this is kind of complexity. So simple on the right and then more complex on the left, which, you know, can be what you need. Um, so if we look at Azure on the very far right, um, I look at it as like blob storage. So this is like binary large object storage. Um, really simple, obviously completely non-relational. Um, and you know, you, you get your like insert and you can get your data and like really that's about all you can do with it. Um, beside that, there's table storage. Um, so this is more like, like a big table, table storage. So it's non-relational, but it looks more like if you're, you know, think of like an Excel file. So it has like tabular data. We actually call them entities. Um, but the idea here being these are super simple services. This one gives you some flexibility to query the data, um, but these are hugely scalable. And the other nice thing is in this case, right, is Microsoft's actually handling, handling the scalability of that. Um, and gives you an SLA on both of those. Uh, we'll just move to the very far left for a second. Um, so this is kind of like SQL Server on a VM um, or SQL Azure. Um, but what we have now in the middle um, on Azure is Document DB. And so this is very much like a Mongo database. Um, so it's an object data store. Um, and you can have some level of like hierarchies in the sense of an object can have an object can have an object. Um, and there is the ability to uh, query uh, document TV. The other thing that's, that's here um, is there's actually four levels um, of how you can run your transactions. And so this means that it can, you know, at the, the least atomic way, it'll it'll act more like a very NoSQL really fast, um, but it might not actually be writing things to disk sort of level. And then on the very other far side of the transaction scope, it can act a lot more like SQL Server. Um, so this is nice because you get to choose how you want it to perform versus how you want the transactions to be handled um, behind the scenes. So along with that, and keep in mind like technologies like that, um, in my mind, um, let's say cost like for performance or for data storage, again, the graph goes like this, um, where these are extremely simple um, and extremely scalable and extremely low cost. Um, the cost can really start going up on the SQL Server side. So like if we take something really simple like, like audit logs, um, there's almost no value to store like an audit log in SQL Server. Uh, you're just going to be paying way too much for it um, versus like picking table storage that will give you a lot of the same functionality like to be able to query your logs um, from table storage. Um, so again, like prefer the things on the right, um, but if you have highly relational data, then move it into SQL. So this is just my mental graph that I always think about whenever I come across a piece of data and how I can store it. Um, now, it's not always perfect, I don't always get to work um, in a place where it's greenfield and I get to make all the choices. Um, a lot of times I step up to the plate 
um, there's already a SQL Server SQL database there. Um, and the thing is, is once that moves on to the cloud, um, this is where it's nice to start cherry picking things out and sticking them in other storage tiers. So a lot of times what I've been doing, let's just put this SQL Azure, uh, is actually just write like a really simple um, background process um, that actually would stick some piece of data into like table storage. And because the internet is like, I don't know, 80, 90% um, read heavy, um, a pattern like this can actually save you a lot of money where you're starting to offload a lot of your traffic from your um, more expensive transactional um, data store um, and you're, you're pulling your data out of things like table or blob. Um, and you can have really low latencies here. I mean, low in terms of what a user expects. I mean, you could have like, you could be generating that data every second or you could have a queue here that's actually doing it more like a push kind of style. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, but just remember that once you're on a cloud platform, um, really start thinking about how, what kind of data you have and how you can store it at a cost-effective way to, to meet your performance. And typically what I see is, you know, over time is you will actually have um, multiple data stores um, and then you might have things like synchronization processes happening between them um, or, you know, even between databases, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, Moving from on-premise, where I was pretty much always storing everything in a SQL database um, because that's what you had installed on-prem and that's what you had licensed and so you'd want to consume it as much as possible. Because it's now consumption-based, uh, now you can start thinking about all these different patterns that your application can benefit from. Um, I hope that was interesting. Uh, please tweet me or please uh, send me a message. I'd love to talk to you about this stuff. Anyways, take care. Bye.